So, can't we just all be focused? Can't we just decide to do those little tiny circles that are too small and we should do more of them? Well, we have these schedules, right? And the schedules are busy. And on top of that, there's these three numbers. There's these three numbers that scare me every single morning I wake up. I think about these numbers every day, okay? Number one, 147. This is the average amount of emails people receive a day today. 147 is the average number of emails the average person is currently receiving. 150. This is the average number of times the, an average person checks their cell phone a day. A day. Which means three times you check your cell phone, there's nothing there. Because there's 147 times there's an email. But three times, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to check that. Number three. The average person is making 295 decisions a day. 295 decisions a day. Did you have lunch where I had lunch? Hmm, do I want the beef? Do I want the chicken? Do I want the fish? They all look good. Which one do I choose? Where do I sit? Who do I sit with? There's so many decisions. You're making decisions all the time. I mean, I'm driving to work and I'm making decisions. What street do I want to turn? Left, right, here, there. You get on the treadmill, hill, manual, incline. What do I want to watch on the TV? You're making too many decisions. And this decision-making energy in our brain is a finite resource. We only have a limited amount of it. And when it's gone, it's gone. You don't even notice you're using it. And there's only two ways to replenish it. Number one is sleep. And number two is glucose, or anything that turns into glucose in your body, which means at the front of the supermarket, when you're just done choosing 30 different salsas and 20 different kind of eggs, it used to be that there was one kind of eggs, but now there's 20. When you're done choosing your eggs and your salsa, you get to the front, what is there? Piles of candy bars. At the end of the trip, when your decision-making energy is down, they finally hit you with the thing you don't even know you need, but you need it because you just used all of your decision-making energy. Has anyone here ever had the experience of uh, choosing their wedding registry in a big department store? Anyone ever had that? You know, where they give you the tells on gun and you walk around yourself scanning everything? It's fun in the morning, isn't it? Hey, what kind of glasses do we want? Tall ones, short ones, bright, shiny? How many do we need? How many bowls? How many plates? How many forks? How many knives? How many blankets? Do we need blankets? Yeah, by the end of the day, and my wife and I did this, by the end of the day, we're adding like $300 ice buckets. We never use an ice bucket. We don't need an ice bucket. Never mind a really fancy one. Our decision-making energy is gone. We're making 295 decisions a day. So, to research the happiness equation, I interviewed a number of Fortune 500 CEOs, billionaires, politicians, world leaders, best-selling authors, and I asked them one question. I said, you're a busy, successful person. How do you make all the decisions in your day? How do you create space? Because I know your schedule is busy. And I synthesized the results from all the surveys into one drawing I made for you today. My drawing suggests that every decision you make takes a certain amount of time, and it's of a certain importance. It's either a lot of time, or it's a little. It doesn't take very long. And it's either not very important, or it's a big deal. Every single decision we make is on this chart. So what do we do with those decisions that are low time and low importance? What do the successful people do? Low time and low importance. With those decisions, your goal is to automate them. To automate them. Remember I told you I was trying to decide which way to get to work every day? Now I follow the ways crowdsourced traffic app. I don't think about how I get to work anymore, ever again. All those decisions, which street, this street, left or right here, I can try to beat the traffic here, listen to the radio for this one, I don't think about. I took 52 decisions out of my day with that one change. A woman came up to me after one of my speeches and says, you know what, that makes a lot of sense because for, for years at work, I was always struggling at lunch. At my office, it was always like, where are you going to go for lunch today? Do you want to go here? Do you want to go here? Hey, who's going to come with it? Who's going to drive? What do you want in your sandwich? Lettuce, tomato, pickles? We've got to get back. It's like so many decisions about lunch. She's like, now I just have a new policy. It's called double dinners. Every dinner I make, I make double. And the double amount is my lunch left over the next day. It's not rocket science. It takes 32 decisions out of the day for her. My friend Chad has Amazon automatic refills on every single consumable item in his entire house. He never thinks about buying toilet paper again, or paper towel, or soap, or anything. Even towels. He's like, yeah, I figured I'd use a towel like once every 1.5 years. So it auto-replenishes. Every 1.5 years, I get a new face towel. 
Like every single thing is automatic for him. It's a decision that for him is low time and low importance. What can you automate in your life? Now, what about those decisions that don't take very long, but they're really important? I'm talking about picking your kids up from daycare. I'm talking about saying hi to your team in the morning. This is important stuff, people. You can't just not do it. And that's why my model suggests that you simply have to do it. It's effectuate. It's a big word with a small meaning. It just means get her done. Execute. Simply effectuate those decisions. Now, what about the decisions that are low in importance that take a lot of time? These are the ones that bog us down, right? These are the checking 147 emails throughout the day. Uh, it's getting home every night and doing a different chore or errand. These are the ones that actually, actually make us sweat. And this is why I want to tell you that for decisions that are not very important but are taking a lot of time, our goal is to regulate them. Find an invisible fence in your life and put it around those things so they still exist but they're only fenced in. An example of the person doing a chore every night after work, chores blitz Sunday. Now I only do chores and chores blitz Sunday. My wife and I, our address is 276 uh, on our house. We have something we invented called 276 day. Anything I think should be improved in the house, or anything she thinks should be improved in the house, this hinge is kind of broken. That wall needs a bit more paint. Someone's got to look at the toilet upstairs. You know, we just write it on our 276 day chart. Now, one Saturday morning a month from 9 to 12, we have it on both of our calendars for the next 12 months, we have 276 day. All we're doing is all those little things that built up. We regulated it and then we don't worry about those things for the rest of the month. It's the same as people that have created an email window. I only answer emails 9 to 10 a.m., 4 to 5 p.m. Guess what? From 10 to 4, I'm email free, right? You regulate it to a part of the day. And guess what happens when you automate, effectuate, and regulate your decisions? You actually have time to debate the ones that matter. You actually have time to think about, to chew on, to wrestle with the where am I going to be, who am I going to be with, where am I going to go? All those things that matter, that affect our lives more than anything else, you can now give them the time and the energy they deserve to properly debate them. I call this secret number two, creating space. And it's my synthesis of what I found these successful people are actually doing without labeling it some way.